All right. Uh, I'm glad to be here tonight. Uh, thank you, uh, Douglas, for the invitation. Uh, my name is Melvin Gibson. In prison, I go by Mel Gibson because uh, with those guys here that Mel Gibson is coming, a whole bunch of them turn out. <laughs> and so I, at least I get one shot at them anyway. And, and uh, they uh, may not come back, but at least they get to preach to them one time anyway. And okay, uh, actually, my middle name is Douglas, so that's, that's a good name. <laughs> uh, most of you have a copy, I think. Testimony, but uh, I was born in a Christian home. My parents, we went to church, actually, born down East Texas. <laughs> when I was six uh, years old, we moved to Fort Worth, moved to the city, and uh, continued to go to church there. And, and uh, But when I was about uh, 12 years old, uh, my dad and mom uh, stopped going to church. <clears throat> they got away from God. And uh, so they quit going, but I had a neighbor that was a real close friend, and so I continued going to church and uh, until I was about 16. Of course, I had a friend that uh, during those years, you know, I, I wasn't all the real goody good guy. I actually had a friend that we got into some trouble, and uh, but the Lord was, I guess, because of His grace. I uh, was able to uh, uh, get away from him, and uh, and when I was 16, I gave my heart to the Lord, a little country church, and uh, <clears throat> three years later, when I was about 19, I felt the call to preach, and so I started preaching as a, as a exhorter, they called it in those days, and uh, when I was 21, I pastored my first church. Uh, for several years, a small country church, and uh, enjoyed pastoring ministry, and and then after that, uh, uh, I left the church and started doing evangelistic ministry, and traveled for 10 or 12 years, uh, Texas and Oklahoma, and Alabama and Mississippi, uh, preaching revivals, and uh, it was during one of my uh, travels to Alabama. Uh, I met a pastor and preached for him and found out that he was a missionary to Mexico. And so uh, we became close and he invited me to go to Mexico with him. I told him I hadn't lost anything in Mexico and didn't have any, any uh, reason to go. And uh, but he kept talking to me, and, and I kept praying about it, and so I uh, canceled a, a few meetings and uh, made a trip to Mexico, and we, we stayed for a month. Uh, we uh, had all kinds of problems, uh, from Alabama to McAllen, Texas is a thousand miles, uh, you know, and then it's uh, 250 more miles into down into Mexico, and uh, he used to always tell me, uh, you know, if uh, we would give Texas back to Mexico, then we wouldn't have as far to go <laughs> to get there because going across Texas is like traveling, you know, forever, <laughs> as we all know. And uh, so uh, I finally agreed to go with him. He said we stayed a month there. Uh, on the way, we had about six blowouts. <clears throat> Uh, going down there, and when we got there, we didn't have a spare. We finally made it. Uh, while uh, while I was there during that month, uh, I got sick and uh, thought I was going to die. Matter of fact, I got a place I wanted to die and, and wished I could have, and, and was sick for uh, uh, a week or two uh, with which with a. I guess the infection that a lot of people get when they go to Mexico. And I uh, had tremendous fever, and actually when I got back home, it took me about a month to get over that, and I lost 20 pounds while I was there. So that was my first experience, you know. And uh, But while I was there, one day, uh, we had walked for a long distance to a little village uh, where we had service. And uh, I, I preached that night, 
and uh, there was an old gentleman got up and uh, testified afterward because I preached out of the book of uh, uh, Habakkuk, I believe it was, the Old Testament, exactly for it, where it says, uh, uh, if there's no uh, food on the table, no sheep, there's no, uh, some of y'all help me with the verse, uh, no, but he said, I will still rejoice in the Lord. And so this gentleman got up, he was an old, very old, and uh, he had lost his wife, and a lot of things had happened, and uh, he was crying, and he, he, he began to praise the Lord, and said, I got a lot, I still have a whole lot to praise God for. Uh, so uh, after that encounter, God touched my heart, and, and uh, we went back to Mexico uh, many times through the years. Uh, we built a church there in, in a place uh, called uh, uh, San, uh, San Carlos up in the mountains. And uh, so I made a lot of trips, even made, made some trips to Mexico by myself uh, during that time and, and uh, saw people come to Christ and, and uh, uh, enjoyed that ministry. Uh, and then in, uh, I guess it was 1995, somewhere in that time, uh, I began to do prison ministry in, or I began to do street ministry, I'm sorry, in Dallas, I was listening to a man by the name of Don Hart who had Big Heart Ministries. He was feeding the homeless in Dallas. He was the first minister to ever do that. I was listening to him on the radio one day and the Lord said, why don't you go over there and see what's going on? So I, I drove to Dallas from Fort Worth and uh, saw what was happening and uh, started helping Don. And so we started feeding the homeless on Sunday morning. We'd have 600 homeless people line up and, uh, we would feed them and then preach the gospel to them and pray with them, see them come to, to know Christ. And and, uh, and then and during that time, uh, I started doing an outreach ministry there on the streets of Dallas, um, industrial and, and market center boulevard, if you know anything about Dallas, where all the uh, bookstores were, all the uh, beer joints, uh, all of those kind of places. and. And as I told uh, Douglas, uh, all of those things were totally out of my character because I had never drank in my life, uh, had never done any drugs. I hated the smell of alcohol. Uh, after my dad got out of church, he started drinking, and uh, I hated it. I hated the smell of it. And yet I found myself uh, on Industrial Boulevard down behind the bars praying for, for uh alcoholics and drug addicts and, and uh, telling them about Jesus and and uh, I, I did that for uh, about six years and it was while I was uh, doing that and doing street uh, ministry and, and feeding the homeless uh, I met a couple that was going to a church called Grand Beacon Church and so they invited me to come and, and so I went to visit and uh, felt like that's where the Lord wanted me to be and they uh, had a men's discipleship program uh, where they took men in off the streets and, uh, with all kinds of problems and, and, and discipled those men. And, and so I started teaching those men uh, in classes each week and uh, did that for a number of years. As a matter of fact, in, uh, in 1993, uh, I quit my job uh, in Fort Worth and uh, came to Dallas to, to the ministry, which was called Care Center Ministries. Uh, came there full time uh, as the associate pastor. And uh, it was in those days when we didn't have any money uh, and we had to trust God for everything. Uh, we prayed in the food, we prayed in uh, the money for everything because we didn't have any support. Uh, but uh, we knew we were doing what God wanted us to do. We had about 25 men uh, in the men's home, and uh, uh, we uh, bought, uh, we were given some property uh, by the RTCA, uh, RTC, I'm sorry, uh, Resolution Trust Corporation back in those days, and uh, they gave us 12 uh, duplexes that had been sitting there unoccupied, run down. Uh, the homeless had taken all of the electricity electricity out of them, all of the plumbing. And so we had to re-plumb and, and re, uh, 
electri electri those put the electricity in all of those buildings and uh, in order to have a place to house our men. Uh, at one time, uh, we had 25 men uh, living in a 600 square foot house with one bathroom and I was also living with them. And uh, those were the, what we call the good old days. <laughs> the good old days when uh, we prayed in everything. Uh, we didn't have enough money to pay bills. We used to get disconnection uh, notices from the electric company and gas company every month. If you don't pay it, we're going to turn it off. And uh, we pray and God come through. And, and uh, you know, uh, as, as we all know, if, we, if you know God, you've trusted God. And, and uh, so it was during that time uh, we were doing street ministry there. We were feeding the homeless uh, on a place called East Side Avenue in East Dallas. Uh, prostitutes were walking the streets. The homeless lived there. Uh, they were doing drugs. They were selling drugs right across the street from us. Uh, all kinds of things were taking place in that neighborhood. And when we actually moved the ministry there, uh, that part of Dallas had the highest crime rate in Dallas. Uh, and uh, we moved there in uh, 1990 and, and got that property and started working on it, remodeling it uh, to get it ready for, to house the men. In the meantime, uh, uh, while doing uh, the street ministry and feeding the homeless, uh, I saw a, a woman living on the streets and uh, she was an alcoholic, she was an, uh, a drug addict, she was uh, high, strung out. And every time I went down the street and saw her, I began to pray for her, asking God to save her. And while we were uh, feeding the homeless, she started coming uh, to, the, to get food. And one of the requirements was you had to attend a 12-step meeting, which was called Overcomers. So she would come in high or drunk and, and sit down and, and sit through the meeting uh, so she could get the food that we were given afterwards. So uh, we learned uh, early in, in time you, you don't feed people and then preach to them. You, you preach to them and then feed them. Yeah, that right. And uh, so we use food. You know, Jesus said, I'll make you fishers of men. And so if you're going to fish, you got to have bait. And so we learn to use food as bait. Yes. You know? And actually that, uh, that woman I'm talking about is my now my wife, Pam. Praise God. And uh, she, wow. uh, our pastor told her, said when you get ready to get off the streets, she'd been living on the streets for four years as homeless. And he said, when you get ready to get off the streets, uh, we will take you into our home and uh, give you a place to live and disciple you. And so one day she came running over to the property and uh, we prayed for her and she said, call the pastor because I'm ready uh, to give up my, and to go live there. So we called him, he came and uh, got Pam, and uh, so uh, she was actually the uh, first resident in our women's home. We didn't have a women's home at that time, and she stayed to live with the pastor for several months and while he and his wife discipled her. Uh, God did a tremendous work in her life, uh, delivered her from drugs and alcohol, Amen. and uh, this month, she uh, celebrated 28 years of being clean and sober All right. after being an alcoholic drug addict for 18 years. So uh, I, I tell people, uh, they say, well, you believe God works miracles? I said, I live with one every day. <laughs> right. uh, I live with a miracle. I, I, knew, I know what she was before uh, that I met her and when I met her. And so I know God can work miracles. And, and nothing's impossible with God. Yeah. And, and uh, the uh, in uh, May of 1995, uh, we uh, got married. And as I said, that'll be 27 years uh, in a couple of weeks. And we continued to live there on the property for several years until we finally moved off, uh, got our own home. Uh, I continued to be the associate pastor 
And uh, then in, in uh, 1995, in January 1995, uh, I attended church at one of our pastor friends' church one night. And he got him, he made an announcement. He said, uh, uh, Brother Cliff Evans said he has been not going to prison because he had open heart surgery and he's been recovering for the last three months. But he's getting ready to go back into prison and uh, said he needs somebody to go and help him and drive for him because at that time Cliff was 80 years old. Uh, he was, when he was 65, he retired and started doing prison ministry. And for 15 years, he had gone to prison, uh, spending a lot of time in the prison for those 15 years. And so after the service is over, uh, I went up to him and I said, I'll, I'll go with you one time. And uh, it was kind of like the trip that I made to Mexico. <laughs> I only intended to go there one time. And, and, uh, but God touched my heart. And so I, I went to the Michael unit. Uh, January of 1995 and uh, I've been going every week since then for, for over 27 years uh, even though I've never been locked up and been in prison couldn't identify with those guys and uh, told the Lord you know how can I identify uh, don't know what it is to be locked up have no idea what they're going through uh, but God gave me favor uh, with those men and uh, as Brother Leroy can testify uh, some of our best friends brothers are guys that, that live in prison that wear white every day and some of them will never get out of prison and so for now over 27 years uh, that's been our life and, and, and so I, I started going uh, just part time continuing to uh, be associate pastor and work in the ministry there. Uh, and then, uh, I don't remember what year it was, felt like God wanted us to do more. Uh, and so uh, I told my pastor, we'll start doing more prison ministry. Uh, I didn't tell my wife until after I told her. I mean, I didn't tell her until after I told him. And, <laughs> and uh, she said, what are we going to do? Because when I told him that, he said, well, we'll have to cut your salary. You know, because you're not going to be here that much. And uh, in case you don't know, uh, volunteers do not get paid uh, to go to prison. Uh, we don't get any money for anything. We don't get money for gas. We don't get money for anything. We do get to eat if we want to. And uh, even though I've asked the chaplains a few times to let me take up an offering, uh, they've always said, no, you can't do that. Uh, so... Uh, so we had to trust God, and uh, but we was going several times, several days a week, teaching classes in prison, uh, going on weekends, uh, traveling throughout the state of Texas, uh, preaching the gospel, seeing uh, men come to Christ, uh, discipling them, and uh, it, it's been a very fruitful ministry uh, for the last 27 years. And uh, as I've said many times, uh, that's where I feel at home. Matter of fact, I, I told the Lord, I said, if, if it's your will, uh, I think that'd be a good place for me to leave if I could just be preaching when you decide you want me to go home. <laughs> and uh, you know how, how people look at me like, you're crazy. And uh, I've had guards say to me, uh, you mean you drive all of these miles to come? to see these guys. I said, yeah, I do. Because I believe they're worth it. Uh, I don't believe you can mess your life up too bad that God can't fix it. Uh, I don't care what you've done. There is no sin that God can't forgive. That's right. And so there is hope and it doesn't make any difference what the conditions are and God doesn't care. Uh, matter of fact, one of these days, uh, we're going to get to all wear white, the Bible tells us. No, right. and so I tell those guys, you know, you, you're all ahead of us. You're already wearing white. Uh, but through the years, we've seen God answer prayer. Uh, seen many people come to Christ. 
uh, seen lives changed. Uh, we've seen God work miracles. Uh, we've seen God open doors uh, for guys that uh, were not supposed to get out of prison. Uh, but God uh, opened the door for them to do that. And uh, so in, in 2018, uh, after spending 25 years uh, with the ministry in Dallas, uh, we felt like it was time to uh, resign. Uh, I, I don't like to use the word retire uh, because uh, we didn't retire. As a matter of fact, we were busier now than we were then. Uh, but we went to our pastor and sought counsel from him and, and got his his, uh, his blessing. And so in June of 2018, uh, we moved our, to uh, uh, Denison, Texas and uh, started doing prison ministry full time. Uh, since then, we, uh, matter of fact, this past January, we moved across the river. Uh, my wife was born in Oklahoma, so she feels at home. Uh, I'm a Texan planted in Oklahoma now. Uh, but God has opened up the doors of prison ministry, uh, one of the units in Oklahoma. And, and so uh, I go there and teach classes during the week. Uh, we do uh, Sunday services there. Also teach a class uh, over at Bonham in one of the units there during the week. And uh, the rest of the weekends we were somewhere in prison. And uh, we enjoy what we do. We love uh, what we do. And uh, uh, we believe that God is raising up a mighty army uh, in the prisons. Yeah. Uh, some of the greatest guys, greatest brothers in Christ I know wear white every day. And uh, as I said, we'll probably never uh, get out. But they're, we've seen their lives changed, transformed. And uh, uh, there, uh, God has blessed us. Uh, uh, we met Brother Leroy and his wife a number of years ago. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping, I don't know whether I can make it 38 years or not, but uh, Brother Leroy is my, my hero. And uh, we, we've seen uh, uh, God uh, do lots of miracles and change people's lives. And uh, God's given us favor. Uh, many of the men that we have taught through the years are out now in pastoring churches, have their own prison ministries going back in. Matter of fact, I saw a man last night at a church in Denison. Uh, he spent 11 years at the Michael unit. We got to minister to him. Now he's out and uh, he's doing prison ministry or he's doing ministry. He's, he's uh, got him a motorcycle. He's doing motorcycle ministry. And uh, so God has blessed us uh, uh, with, with favor. And also I'm reminded of the scripture that Jesus said that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, uh, you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. And he said, uh, also he said, you did not call me or choose me, but I chose you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. And I thank God for fruit that remains. You know, men that have given their lives to Christ uh, who today are pastoring churches, uh, going back into prison, uh, they're deacons in churches. And, and so God keeps his word. God keeps his promises. And I have found that uh, when you do the will of God and you invest in the kingdom of God, uh, there, there's always a great return. Yeah. Uh, I tell those guys in prison, uh, I don't invest in the stock market. Anybody wants to do that, I'm, that's fine. That's not my deal. I'd rather invest in lives. I'd rather invest in men's lives. Amen. And, and so I, I spend my money uh, buying gas and, and going to prison to invest in their lives. And, and I believe it's the best investment uh, that you can make. Uh, one of the things that God laid on our heart last year was concerning the men in prison. There's so many of them uh, that have no communication with their children. Yeah. Their fathers, some of them have many children, but because of the fact that they're incarcerated, 
they have no communication with their children. Many of the times their children have been hurt when they've gone to prison. Uh, they don't have anything to do with them. And so God laid on our heart to begin to pray that God would restore communication between those fathers and those children. If you look in the book of Malachi, the last chapter, and I believe it's the last verse, it says that God will restore the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. I believe that's God's heart. I believe family is God's heart. And I know we live in a society today that is trying to mess it up, but I believe it's God's will that families be restored. Right. And so uh, we started praying. Every unit that we go to, we ask uh, those men, if you don't have communication with your children, we want to know because we want to pray for you. And we were at a unit Sunday, and four more men told us, said, since you were here, God has restored communication with our children. That makes 44 men now. We're up to 44 men that are in prison who did not have any communication with their children who now do. And one guy over in Bonham at the unit there, uh, he gets to talk to his daughter every day. She's calling him every day. He gets to talk to her. Uh, it, that that's so exciting to see what God is doing, right. and uh, I don't know where it's going to stop. We're believing God uh, that God's going to restore every family because I believe that's the heart of God. That's right. And, and I know those men made mistakes, but we all make mistakes. Yeah. Some make bad decisions. I made some bad ones. Uh, I just didn't get caught. Okay, and, and so uh, there's a great need. Uh, those men need prayer. I encourage you to pray for them. Uh, they also, uh, every year, about 60,000 men are released in Texas back into our neighborhoods. 60,000 men are going to come out of prison. Some of them are going to be your neighbors. Okay? So, uh, I think it'd be wise if we pray that God would save them before they come out. Yes. Okay? Because you don't want somebody living next to you that don't know, know the Lord. And, and so, uh, you know, if God lays on your heart to go, uh, it's the greatest ministry I know. Uh, if not, pray. Pray for, pray for those men in prison. Yeah. Uh, because they want to get out. They want to be back with their families. And, and God wants to do that. And uh, uh, we're, we're believing to see a great move of God. One thing that Brother Cliff Evans, the one who got me started in prison, uh, as a matter of fact, let me say this right quickly. Uh, Cliff was 80 when I started going with him. We, we traveled for 10 years, about 40,000 miles a year, going back and forth to prison for 10 years. He was one, he liked one month being 90 when he passed away. Three weeks before he died, he was with me in prison. Oh. Mm -hmm. Almost 90 years of old, 90 years of age. So you never get too old. You never get too old to do something for God. That's right. Never get too old. And he always said, uh, God's raising up a mighty army in the prisons. And all we got to do is look around at, a, at our society today, what's happening in America. And, and we need an army of men and women of God. Uh, another highlight that we have, and thanks to uh, Brother Leroy, uh, this, this year uh, we're going with Brother Leroy into the women's, one of the women's prisons in Oklahoma. That, that has been my wife's desire to go, her heart to go and minister to the women uh, in the prisons. And so we're looking forward to that. Uh, to see uh, some of those ladies come to know Christ, see them get, it, get saved, get back out, and, and be the mama that, uh, that God wants them to be. And, and so that's, that's my life in a nutshell, I guess. And, and once again, uh, everything that, uh, that I've done that God's called me to do it's totally been out of my character. Uh, and, and, but 
uh, I, I've been rewarded, been blessed. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I believe it's John 16, 23, I believe. He said, whosoever uh, serves me, my Father will honor. Whoever serves me, my Father will honor. Yeah. There's no greater honor than to be honored by God. Uh, across the state of Texas, in all in units everywhere, all because of God's honor. When they say Mel Gibson is coming, people say I got to go here. That's 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 favor. It's God's favor. That's the honor. Yeah. I tell people all the time: don't know the governor, don't know the president, don't even know the warden. Don't want to be. It wouldn't change places in them. But I do know Jesus Christ, and I know a whole bunch of guys that are excited when we decide to come. That's honor. God, Jesus said, if you'll serve me, my Father will honor you. And so I'm an honored man. An honored man today. So thank you, brothers, for the invitation. So uh, we want to pray today. Anybody doesn't know Jesus Christ, you need to make a rededicate your life to Him. You don't know Him. I want to give you an opportunity to do that today. So let, let, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you today. Lord, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. Thank you, Jesus, that you went to the cross and died on that cross for us. Shed your blood so that we could be forgiven so that we can have eternal life. And Lord, we just pray for everyone that's here tonight. Lord, there's one that doesn't know you. Lord, I pray that you touch their heart. There's one, Lord, that, that uh, needs to draw closer to you. Whatever the need is in their life, we ask that you would minister to them tonight, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.